So hi everyone and welcome to our beautiful Scotland Spring Seminar of 2023. I can't believe it's 2023 already. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Juliet and I oh, have a new job title, Senior Officer for Community Initiatives, which sounds rather grand, but basically I lead on our beautiful Scotland and It's Your Neighbourhood initiatives. And we support and recognise over 200 community groups across Scotland. Um, so it's fantastic to see some of you today and those of you watching the recording. Um, my line manager, Katie, is here today. So Katie, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Hello, yeah, I can introduce myself and just say a wee, a wee thank you from KSB, I suppose. Um, so I'm Katie O'Donnell. Um, I'm communities manager at Keep Scotland Beautiful. So um, the Beautiful Scotland work kind of sits within my um, my portfolio of, of projects um, supporting communities across Scotland. So um, most of you will already know KSB's kind of core objectives are around combating climate change, tackling litter and waste and uh, protecting and enhancing the places where we live, work and visit. So Beautiful Scotland is absolutely core um, to the kind of mission and vision of, of Keep Scotland Beautiful. Um, so we're just looking forward to, to supporting all of you groups um, for another year, as Juliet said, can't believe we're back round to another new year. Um, and a big thank you to everyone who's chosen to come and register with us for this year. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Um, right, I'll just pull up the slides. Okay, so Katie, can you see full screen slide? Brilliant, okay, uh, just move on. So basically today, like I say, please just unmute and ask questions whenever you need to. You don't need to scribble lots of notes because I'll send around the slides and I've updated the guidance and advice, sort of top tips documents and I'll be emailing them around after. Um, so yeah, I'll go through a little bit of the mark sheet and the criteria for this year. Then the three opportunities to showcase your community. Um, so we've got Wendy from East Haven, who's gonna share about their portfolio and give some top tips. And we've also got Libby and Alex from North Berwick and Bloom, who are gonna talk about planning and organizing their tour and sharing some top tips as well. Then we'll have a chance to meet our volunteer judges that are here today um, and a chance to meet each other as well. And then I'll, I'll run through the year ahead as well. And then hopefully we'll still have some time to chat at the end. Um, okay, so the 2023 mark sheet and criteria. So Beautiful Scotland's our way of being able to recognise and celebrate everything that you do across your community under the three pillars of horticultural achievement, environmental responsibility and community participation. And the way we do this for the judge category is through our mark sheet. Um, and it's just about working out what your, where your activities fit within the criteria under the mark sheet and evidencing this to your judges. And most of this stuff, even though the mark sheet might look daunting, most of this you're doing already. And it's just, like I said, figuring out where it all fits. Um, Wendy will talk a little bit about that later, as will I'm sure Libby and Alex. The mark sheet is also a really good tool for you, whether you're in the judged or non-judged categories, um, just giving you a bit of a direction and a framework to kind of focus what you're gonna work on in your communities. And again, I think Wendy will touch on that later. Um, so I'm just going to give you a brief overview now. So, like I said, the three pillars are horticulture, environment and community. And you can see there the split of how the marks work. There's two mark sheets. The standard one pretty much fits all of the categories. Um, and then there's a separate mark sheet for the business improvement district category and our town centres and city centres category. Um, so for the horticulture achievement pillar, it's worth 40%. And there's four criteria under that. And in the mark sheet, which I'll email you as well, it gives you kind of a steer under each what the judges are looking for and what, what you're going to be working towards. So A1 um, is very much about have you created a memorable impression across your community? Um, A2 about maintenance of planted areas. This is, is, includes trees um, and should take account of biodiversity needs throughout the seasons. And A3, the italic text for, that you'll see in these slides, that's for the business improvement district and the town centre and city centre categories. The normal text is for all the other categories. So A3 the, is really talking about the right plants in the right place. Again, enough biodiversity 
enough diversity for wildlife across your entry and year round interest. But it's also all about what's appropriate for your area. And for the bids in the town centre and city centre categories, A3 is all about are you enhancing visitor experience through seasonal displays, um, using seasonal displays for local events and celebrations. And A4, the plant, plant quality one, um, is all about pests and diseases, the health of your plants, um, just making sure that they're, they're, they're healthy and you're keeping an eye on the pests and diseases. And for the business improvement district, that's all about uh, year round interest and are the plants appropriate for the areas. The B, uh, the B pillar, environmental responsibility, there's three criteria under this and they're, they're all worth 10%. So B1, the local identity and pride of place. That's all about how you're acknowledging and celebrating your local heritage. And that does include biodiversity. And this could be through art in the landscape, signage, and what and it's about telling your story, what makes your place unique? What are you doing to look after your place? B2, the natural environment, that's very much about are you considering nature in all your activities? Have you made efforts to create, restore, or maintain appropriate habitats to support wildlife? and include native species? Are you assessing their effectiveness through, for example, simple surveys? And for the bids, town centre and city centre category, this is uh, looking at the management of commercial and residential properties and vacant sites. Um, B2 is about your sustainable gardening practices, including might be conserving resources, minimising negative in impacts. So for example, tell your story of how you're creating your own compost, you're moving away from using peat and sort of trials you've done growing peat free, um, how you're reducing the use of chemicals. Um, if bedding plants are still important to your community, uh, can you move towards growing some of your own? It's about your sustainable planting, um, using herbs, for example, or edibles in your displays. Um, have you experimented with alternative hanging baskets, maybe edibles or perennials? Um, Lots of different ideas under this. And again, they're in the mark sheet. You don't have to be doing all of them. Um, it's just making sure you tell the story of what you are doing. Because um, we all need to learn and be inspired by, by examples. So if there's something you are doing here, please let us know and your judges know so we can share it. Um, okay. And the third one, community participation. This has got three criteria underneath it. And it's all about how you're bringing everyone in your community together to celebrate what's unique about your community and everything that's going on. Um, C1, year-round activity and future commitment. So it's not just about the judging day, putting things out for your judges, it's about what you're doing through the year. And you can show this through the portfolio, your presentation, notice boards, um, any way that you think is fit, fit for your, your community. It's about sharing what your plans going forward are, even if it's just maintaining what you're already oh, doing, which is, oh, Sorry, does someone want to add something there? No? Okay. Um, C2, communication, education and awareness. So this is um, using signage and interpretation to enable learning, how you're selling your entry in your community, so how you're telling everyone what you're doing um, and maybe out with your community. It's about how you engage and interact with everyone in your area. And then C3, it's about have you made every effort to be inclusive and engaging the support of a wide range of local groups and organizations? And it's about evidencing your fundraising and ongoing support. So again, there's a lot of different things that this covers. Um, it's a really useful exercise to do. Um, we call a self-assessment exercise and it's to think about everything that you do, your group does or who it works with or who it supports in your community. And it's thinking about how you're gonna judge everything that's going on and imagining you are a judge coming to your community. So you take the mark sheet and you look at the criteria and you think about what do I want to show them? Um, is it, am I um, showing them things that fit under pillar A or B or C? Um, and it'll help highlight areas you're really strong and maybe particular areas you might want to improve or you might want to show different projects that might give you more marks. So it's a good idea to take someone who's not involved in your group around with you, around your potential route, um, just to get their views, um, because they might have ideas of different things you can show. 
Um, and it's a really good exercise to repeat a few times through the year, just to get an idea of where are the best places to take the judges, how you could showcase things in the best way. Um, okay, so we're now coming on to the, the three opportunities to showcase your community. And what we'll keep saying is that it's all about telling your community story. Every community is so different, but there's three ways that we give you to be able to showcase to our judges. And these are your portfolio, the presentation and your tour. So first I'm gonna introduce Wendy from East Haven Together, who's going to talk about her portfolio, well, their group's portfolio and some top tips. Um, I'll then give a, an overview of the presentation part and then Libby and Alex from North Berwick and Bloom will share how their group plans and organizes their judging tour and we'll pass on some of their top tips. And like I've said already, all of the top tips and guidance will be emailed to you after. So don't worry about trying to remember it all. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop sharing so Wendy can share her slides. Okay, Wendy. Everybody see that? Mm, no. No. <laughs> right, that's not a good start. Um, Perhaps you would display it. Yeah, Julie. I can do that. Okay, so one sec. Okay, can everyone see that? Yeah. Okay, over to you, Wendy. Right, okay, thank you. I'm just going to do that so I can see it myself. Right. Okay. Well, I, I wanted to start really just by uh, telling you a little bit about East Haven because East Haven was a very different place 10 years ago. Perhaps you want to move on, Juliet? Great. It's a very different place 10 right, years I'm, ago. I'm having a job to hear. That might be my fault. Yeah, have you tried turning up your volume, Joy? I can hear Wendy okay. 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 But these are some photographs of East Haven on the right here. And you can see that we had litter, fly tipping and antisocial behaviour. And the village had been in a state of decline really over at least uh, 10, 15 years. But as it was going to be our 800th anniversary in 2014, we decided that we would consult with residents and ask them what kind of improvements they would like to be see to be made. And they came up with lots of really... I think uh, I can put my video off. See, I can myself in. Okay, they came up with lots of really good ideas. But we suddenly realised that we had no idea how to turn everybody's ambitions into a reality. It all just seemed very confusing to us and we really didn't know where to start. Uh, can you move on, Juliet? So fortunately, um, somebody suggested that we look at uh, Keep Scotland and Beautiful and Beautiful Scotland's three pillars of horticulture, environment and community participation. And I remember going to the website, looking at uh, the three pillars and suddenly feeling that everything fell into place. It really um, was a defining moment because the confusion really fell away and it felt very empowering because suddenly I felt we had clarity and that confidence to really take forward everybody's priorities in a way in which we felt was right for the community and um, just right in terms of sustainability. So from there, we went on to um, actually participate in um, Beautiful Scotland in 2014. And that's when we produced our first portfolio. Move on. And uh, you can see the first one that we produced on the left here, and we've now produced nine portfolios and they have improved over time as we have become clearer about what to include and how best to present it for the judges. As you can see, the one on the left looked a little bit like a community newsletter, um, 
but um, our, certainly our more recent ones and last year's one looked more like um, perhaps a, a brochure or a visitor brochure and something that we could share more widely. And it can be used in a number of different ways because they go on our web. Hundreds of people download them every year to find out more about the village. And we also send them to grant funders and to other partners to evidence our achievements and ability to deliver on projects. And they very much form part of the social history of our communities. And increasingly, we feel that because when we look back, we think, gosh, was it really like that? Is that what we did? And um, of course, there are people that are no longer here that were here in 2014. So it's really wonderful to have them as a record. We move on. Right. And um, in terms of top tips, I just thought it would be um, helpful to really start to think about um, the photographs that we include in our portfolios and when we actually start putting them together. And I think it's important to remember that you can start using photographs from August last year right through to the first week in July when you have to submit your portfolios this year. And photographs really do tell the story. So we need lots of good photographs. You really should be out with your cameras all the time. Um, and this photograph on the right here, I love this photograph because I think it tells the whole story. It tells the joy of tree planting. You can see that immediately on the face of the volunteer who I think is watching today. This is Anne. Um, but the, the other thing to note about this photograph is that we don't actually have to get permission in terms of the child because the child's face is completely covered. You can't tell who the child is. So, um, it, but it is really important to remember permissions because if you, particularly if you're having children, but adults as well, make sure that everybody is happy um, that um, their photograph is included in the brochure. So, um, and, and again, make sure that when you're designing your, your portfolio, that you're thinking about uh, the three pillars and designing uh, the portfolio around that. So we'll move on. Um, and as your portfolio can't be more than 10 pages long, we tend to keep our introduction to approximately half a page. Um, in that half page, we try to include as much well it's, it's actually quite hard to keep it brief but a little bit about who is our community is there anything about the history or the heritage that's really important to include here what sort of a group are you how many volunteers have you got when were you established and are there any particular aims ambitions or priorities of the group so these are all things that could be included um, in the introduction. And the important thing is that not to assume that the judges know anything about your place and your community. Um, move on. And um, in terms of the three pillars, what we tend to do is allocate two or three pages to each of the pillars. And we use a horticulture section to not only display you know, lovely photographs of the gardens, but also things that the judges won't see on the tour. So for example, a huge amount of work, I'm sure it's the same for you, everybody that's here today is being undertaken right now um, in terms of cutting back and clearing the gardens and uh, adding soil in hands or whatever you're doing just now. These are things that the judges won't see. So, you know, take as many photographs as you can of these activities so that they know what's been happening and in what month, if you can just put a little date on. Um, it's not um, necessary to put in a huge amount of writing. It can just be little bullet points uh, as by way of explanation. And it's the same with environmental responsibility on this slide. And I think what we have found as well is that the portfolio is another um, useful way to look at self-assessment because you can 
use this against the mark criteria that Juliet was speaking about to make sure that you've covered as much of the criteria as possible because really there should be a photograph against each of the um, uh, mark criteria and if there's not perhaps you could think about that well why why is that have we just missed taking photographs and perhaps you could write a little bit about that um moving on to community participation uh again uh this can be divided into seasons to evidence your all year round activity so for example we have photographs of the Airdale remembrance service which takes place in november um, so it, there can be things taking place all over the winter or Christmas, um, spring, and it's important to include that in community participation. Um, I've also, I, I chose this particular page as an example because we choose to include information in, under the heading of community participation about funding um, and the source of some of our grants and donations. So. On another page, we might put something in about the different partners that we work with, people who've supported us in a particular year. And again, it doesn't need to be a lot of writing, but just um, visual displays and examples. I'm moving on. So um, the other thing that you can um, do in your portfolio is to discuss any future plans, anything else that you want to tell the judges about. But I've also put on here that um, maintaining the work that you're doing and supporting all your volunteers to continue to enjoy working with you is a very worthy plan. And that is really important because it's a huge, well, all of you who are involved in um, groups will understand the amount of work that goes into supporting volunteers, giving them an enjoyable experience, making them feel valued and supported in what they do and just to continue that is a huge effort and a huge amount of work so that is enough if that's your future plans but on the other hand you may have other projects that you you are thinking about that you do want to tell the judges about and that's great as well um and just um a little word about appendices you can include an appendices but try and keep it to a minimum and only include it if it's really relevant and required. So in East Haven, one thing that we do feel is really relevant um, is our sustainable <coughs> strategy. So we would make sure that we had put that in. Um, and going forward, we'll sometimes in the past, we have taken a photograph of a, um, a newspaper article um, about East Haven. We won't be doing that in the future because of copyright. We will only provide a link to a particular newspaper article or we may um, design a little front of a book cover or something if we've appeared in a magazine um, and that will get around that issue of um, being able to uh, let the judges know that we have um, been in the media or in the press, whatever, without um, uh, any copyright issues. So um, I think we just have one final slide and that really is about um, just reinforcing the fact that putting together the portfolio is a really enjoyable experience. I was saying to Juliet that it's a bit like um, for those of you that used to enjoy um, putting together photograph albums in the past. We don't really do it anymore. But um, for, for many years, I enjoyed putting together photograph albums and just writing underneath who people were and what we were doing. And um, it's very much with the same with the portfolio, except it is digital, of course. But it is a way of ensuring that everything that you have done all year round is recorded and um, it um, keeps your light shining all year round too. So... Um, that's really the conclusion of the portfolio. Thank you, Wendy. That was a really good overview. And I think, I don't know, maybe you just say or not, but for a lot of people, like it doesn't matter what your portfolio looks like. It doesn't matter the quality. And um, it could just be a simple word document, like Wendy said, with bullets and some photos. Um, but there might be a college or a high school that you could maybe get young people involved in 
pulling it together for you if technology is a bit of a scary thing for you so don't be afraid to reach out into your community or ask people if they've got any grandkids or or children who might be interested in helping you um i know quite a few groups do do that um i think that was the final point on that oh yeah main thing as wendy says is to enjoy and make sure you you put everything you're doing through the year in your portfolio so thanks wendy um, Okay, yes, so I'll quickly do, so the next way to showcase what you do to your judges is your presentation and this, you get 15 minutes to do this and we generally recommend at the beginning of when your judges come to visit you on their judging tour. Um, and again, Libby and Alex will touch on a little bit probably where they do theirs when they're taking their judges around North Berwick. Um, so again, it's ideally we say at the start, um, it's a good, a good way to give your judges an overview of your community and what they're going to see when they're off on the tour and also what they you don't have time to take them to see um it can also show all the things you've done between handing in your portfolio on the first of july well the first week of july until your judges come in august so that's the presentation is a good opportunity for that and um, like the um, portfolio any format you're not judged on how you deliver your presentation or the style it's more about what you're telling your judges that can help them when they're working out your scores so you could be just sitting at a table showing some pictures um like physical pictures and chatting to your judges you could show a video you've created um, you could have different community representatives coming to talk about what they've been doing it's basically how you would like to do it um and again the really important thing again is that is the content within it that's the important thing um and so when we come to the the time to chat at the end of any other one any groups or judges have anything they want to share to help for top tips with presentation um please do okay so um your tour is when you get to take the judges around your community and you get to show off all the amazing planting and community um activities and that are going on across your town or your village or your city. Um, it's about showing who you like and getting the judges to meet who you work in partnership with, other groups you support, um, anyone really that you work with, um, they support you, you support them. So every community is different. So all tours will be completely different. Um, so there's no one way to plan a tour, but Libby and Alex are gonna give a little bit, um, share a little bit about how they plan and organize theirs and with some top tips as well I think so I'm going to stop sharing and hand you over to them now um, okay So you should see a share button down the bottom of your screen, Libby, and then if you click that, it should bring up some options. Is it showing you that? Are we back with you? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, we lost all the controls for a minute, but hopefully we're. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it seems you want to. It seems to be a bit into it. Can you see your share screen button? Yeah, that's it. We should be sharing now. Yeah, that that's great. Over to you. Great. Um, let me just. Uh, yeah, should be fine. Hello. Thank you very much, Juliet. Um, let's hope this is going to work. Uh, Yes, there we go. Yes, um, thanks very much for inviting us to to um, tell you a little bit about our uh, our um, preparations for judging last year. I think it's uh, it's the same as you've all mentioned. It's really really hard to choose which photos and what to tell you because there was just so much. And uh, North Berwick and Bloom is a well established group. It's been going for many years, and uh, there's lots and lots of things that the group does as a routine every every year. But we felt that for the competition, we do a few extra bits and pieces and really use it as an opportunity. I um I heard. Uh, um, Susan, from who's one of the finalists for for this year going forward into into 
into the Britain in Bloom finals. And um, she gave a really nice interview about um, it's not just about growing plants, it's about growing your community and, and growing people as well. And I thought that was a really nice way of, of doing it because we certainly tried really hard to engage with lots and lots of different groups and involve them in the competition. It wasn't just about North Berwick and Bloom, it was about the whole town. And uh, I thought that was a, a really good thing to focus on. The other main reason that I liked doing the competition was it, it was a really good excuse to do things that wouldn't normally get done in the town. And uh, we really used this a lot, for example, with the community council, we'd say, well, you know, we need to smarten up the high street because we're in the finals this year. And uh, lots of people joined in with, in with that as well. So, um, so this is our team last year. And um, uh, in the competition of 2021, there were just medals given out. There were no winners or anything like that, but um, we did do the, the traditional tour of the year before and we were delighted to win a gold medal. And on the back of that, Juliet asked us if we'd like to represent Keep Scotland Beautiful. Gosh, I'm getting all confused with my years. I started doing this presentation as 22 and Alex reminded me it's actually 21. It's uh, it's just amazing how the how the time's flown. Anyway, we got lots and lots of support from the whole town, and th this is a a, a a montage that the community council had, and they put up they put up a week of uh, supporting North Berwick and Bloom, um, just to publicise the fact that we were in the finals. So uh, we do lots of traditional gardening around the town. We look after lots of perennial beds. We plant lots of planters. Uh, we have um, gardening on the beach. We do lots of displays in the high street and up at the station. And all of the normal activities had to carry on, even though we were preparing for the finals. So um, we'd carried on with all, all our usual activities. We have a, a pallet garden in the high street, which we maintain all year round and we put different displays. And uh, we've got a, a lovely new board now, which you can see on the left, which was made for us by a local joiner. And uh, that just really gives us a presence in the town. We have a tulip festival every year. So that, that went on as normal. And uh, then when we heard that we'd been invited to represent uh, Keep Scotland Beautiful in the finals, Juliet came to visit us and uh, she, she took part in some of our activities at the beginning of the year. And we had a good chat about everything. Uh, these are some of our perennial beds on the right hand side. And uh, here you can see us helping the countryside rangers to take out some sycamore seedlings that had seeded themselves in the wrong place. So lots and lots of activities. I mentioned special projects and um, this was one particular one. This is right in the middle of the high street and throughout lockdown, people had started living, leaving their bins in the high street. There's a huge big red one there for, from Greg's and there was even a yellow um, clinical waste which was locked and nobody knew where it had come from, but it had been there for years. Uh, and people had started parking and leaving their cars and it was just a com complete eyesore. So we, we used the competition as, a, as, a, a, as an excuse to ask everybody to, to tidy up. You can see it, it used to be the, or oh, it still is the police station. Mm -hmm. And um, and we, we contacted Police Scotland and asked them if they would paint the windows, which they did. They came in and they painted the windows. We managed to get rid of all the bins and the council installed three of uh, these big planters to stop people parking. Uh, we got some window boxes, which we paid for out of some special donations. And um, basically the whole place now is a seating out area. It's uh, one of the sunniest places in the town and it's used by all sorts of people. The pupils come down there at, uh, from the high school at lunchtime and people from the day centre come and sit in the sun and uh, see you know see, see people going past i was going to say and um, last year um it was a focal kind of a focal point it was certainly on the judging route and showing them in the, the presentation certainly in the portfolio and at the time photographs of how it was so the early photo that would be put up and then they could see it as it was on the day mm -hmm. um, so it was that drawing it to their attention and it was part of the judging route yeah, so that they could see it was a special project we'd done. So that was part of it. Was quite and speaking to the local community council chairperson actually in front of it with the photographs, so incorporating it into our judging route. Well, let me carry on, um, Alex, from yeah. here. No. 
I'll do this bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, community projects. We didn't actually manage to get the judges up to this bit. I think one of the things we find, we definitely find in North Berry, because the timing is to get everyone to show everything we're doing is very difficult in the time, even in the three hours we had last year in Britain and Bloom. So again, going back to the previous thing on the portfolio or the presentation, we would have photographs in either or both of these about community projects that we get involved with and helping people progress on things in the community. Um, and again, planting trees. So I suppose it, it's pulling through what Juliet's saying, the three elements, the portfolio, the presentation, and then the actual judging route again, we couldn't take them to here, but we showed them that. Um, an area we might like to try and get them up to is the country park at the top of the town. And we've just planted a new an orchard up there with special funding. So again, getting young people, getting the whole community involved in it. Um, this was Cathy, the primary school, planted up for the Cali Spring Show and they won the trophy last year for the best um, jet fire at the show for children for youngsters groups and working with the p5 taking them on a tour around the school play school area not just the playground but they would beside it um, and they've asked us back to do that again this year so preparation for the judging coming back onto that there's two of our volunteers Jeanette and anita cleaning up the telephone box which is still a functional telephone box but up at the railway station beside the car park and it was just filthy and we'd take the judges up to the railway station but I think in everything we did from kind of here on they improved the painting and the cleaning up that we did we had two things in mind very much the Britain and Bloom final and a knowledge that if we didn't do what you're about to see then we wouldn't get on very well in it because they judge the the environment aspect of it and what the town looks like but also we wanted to do it for the community because a lot of it was very shabby and we thought it's a good reason to do it not an excuse it's a good reason to do all these things um, so that was cleaning up the telephone box this one we don't have the before and after but the black plaque between the two guys behind that there was old bamboo screening that looked was falling over on its side looked awful the black screen was all rusted and the whole area it just dragged down the whole area. And it's right um, at the sort of crossroads of streets in the heart of the town. So the judges couldn't have failed to see it as they came down to where we do the presentation. And then they go past it a second time um, to see part of the route. So um, Kenny and I, another guy, a guy and I got together and we painted it over, tidied it out behind, painted it up, and it just looks so much better. And also it still makes us smile when we see it because it just looks so much better. The town, the Provost lamppost on the left, you see what it was like. And again, on the judging route, the judges were going to walk across a pedestrian crossing right past the lamppost and round to the right and down the high street. Um, and that was just going to pull down marks and it looked awful for everyone. So again, Kenny and I <laughs> and Libby helped standing guard up the ladder and painted it up, not the very fancy bit at the top, but we painted as high as we could reach. Um, and, as, and as high as the judges were likely or public were likely to see it. And there's the two of us painting an old um, phone box. This one isn't a phone box anymore. It's got a cash machine on the side of it. Um, so we started, in fact, I think the far side still has a phone in it and it looked awful as well. And again, just beside the judging route. So we painted that up. Um, there's a pub, the county hotel in the middle of the town, which has been empty for, I think, even before lockdown. And the windows had nothing in them. It looked, you were just looking into an empty place with lots of cobwebs and dust and the whole frontage was really poor so we decided we needed an in bloom hit squad about a week before judging and uh, that was the hit squad washing it all down um, you can see a watering cart came out to rinse everything off and the number of people going past I think it was a 
thirst Wednesday or Thursday evening, and the number of people going past saying, "Good on you," basically. Um, you install the water butt again, back to what's put in the portfolio, and the night before judging, we were up. Kenny was up putting um, knitted squares up lamp posts around the place as well. So there's just a lot of um, making things look better, and it was fairly rusty. The bottom part of the lamp post we painted. That's in the lodge. We painted that as high up as we could reach. But again, that covered a bit of the mess of rustiness on it. Goes back to Libby. To yes, um, thanks, Alex. And so, really, lots and lots of things that I think people were pleased that we'd done because of the kind of tasks that nobody would normally ha have taken on. This is just another bit of the lodge. There were lots of black black railings that oh. that were painted as well as well as doing the flowers. This is down by the harbour. Um, it's a wild flower bed, just tidying it all up and sprucing it up for judging. Yeah. And um, this was one of the, the pictures that we used for our special presentation at the end. Um, somebody, we're not even sure who, painted these lovely f f feet, uh, which are at all the beaches, uh, just to remind people to not leave any litter on the beaches and uh, help people to care care for the environment. Um, and this is one of our displays uh, just at its best at the end of the summer. So on the day of judging, um, everybody was out cleaning and uh, washing and sweeping. We had help from lots of other community groups, uh, picking up litter. People go around the actual judging route and make sure that it's spotless. And uh, at the this is this is the judges you can see in the middle of the photograph, uh, along with many of our volunteers who came out on the day, and also many of the other groups who came out to meet the judges. We had lots and lots of people meeting the judges. You can see a brownie there on the left hand side, mm -hmm. uh, community groups, Rotary, Bass Rock group, all sorts of people, and um, we tried to get as many involved as we could. One um, tip that one of the judges on a previous year had had told me was he said that um, when you get people out to meet the judges always make sure that you know them because it looks it looks awful if you don't know who you who they're meeting but uh, everybody who was out on the judging tour meeting the judges was part of the day they were all enthusiastic they all chatted and they talked and um, it was just a great atmosphere and uh, this is our uh, team photo towards the end that worth saying that on the where we put people all around the judging route that they met. So they met different people at different locations around the route. So they met the brownies beside a notice board um, that they'd helped, they'd made the display to go in the notice board. So they chatted to them there. And then further on, they stopped and talked to the shop, several shopkeepers that are the business association in the town. Um, and then went in via the day centre to see the work we're doing with them and spoke to some of the people in the day centre. So it was a conscious thing, but we'd have probably done it anyway, to have young people, older people, all the different people in the community um, speaking to them, but all involved in, they're all involved. It wasn't a sort of set up for the day, say a few words, but they were not involved in, in North Berwick and Bloom all year round. They are. Mm -hmm. um, it was just coming along, talking about their involvement throughout the year with North Berwick and Bloom. Yeah, so it was a great atmosphere on the day. And then finally, we, we did go down to London for the results. Actually, Julia, you were there too, weren't you? And we were extremely excited to win a gold medal and the best coastal town. So um, we were very, very happy with that. But of course, it all comes down to the fact that there's a really good core team behind behind the effort. And I guess um, if you were going to say, was it worth it? We would say, yeah, absolutely. We did a huge amount of work, but we achieved a lot of things that probably wouldn't have got done in the town without it. And would we do it again? Well, what do you think, Alex? <laughs> Not for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, maybe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's our that's our team. So, thank you very much, and um, we'll try and hand you back. Uh, Top share. Click on the red one, and that should be it. Thanks, Maybe. Libby and Alex. Uh, that was brilliant. Um, I, just to clarify, so that those that I didn't say at the beginning, so Libby and Alex were talking about they were one of our groups representing Scotland in the UK finals last year. So it's 
you feel a bit more got to do a lot more but um yes you are back into beautiful Scotland this year you wouldn't not do that so just wanted to clarify that but um yeah I just thought I'll do a little bit more on the tour about for those that you don't know haven't been in before it shows I'm going to show about timings that you get depending on your categories and then we'll, we'll come back together and have questions and getting to know each other so let me Okay, so for each category in Beautiful Scotland, there's a particular amount of time you get to take the judges round um, and to introduce, show them your projects and things. So you can see there the first categories. So for example, a small village has an hour and 15 for your tour. And then on top of that, you've got a 15 minute slot that you can use for um, any press you've invited along or to take photos and the 15 minutes on top of that for your presentation. So in total, you have an hour and 45 minutes. Again, this will all be in the documents that you that I'll send out to you. And then the next lot of categories. So the update for this year is that for large town, small cities and city categories, they can add on a break in the middle. Um, so just once I've allocated the judging pairs, get in touch and chat to your judges about that, whether if you want to do that. It just it's off the clock and allows you all to have a bit of a comfort break. Um, so again, these will all be emailed out to you. Um, Top tips, well, Libby and Alex, you've gone through loads of them. Um, but yeah, so one of the ones, and I think you do this, is to create a, a simple itinerary document, which is useful for yourself and your group, um, but it's very useful for the judges. So it just lists um, the sites you're going to go to, who you might meet, and you leave a little space for the judges to write some notes. Um, again, the documents I send you will have links to good examples of that, so you don't have to create something completely um without having a kind of template to walk around, work with. Um, yeah, another good tip is to start with a why and end with a why. So if you've got, for example, a sustainable bed you're really um, proud of, you can maybe start there. And then where you finish your tour, again, if you have another why, it's always a, a good tip there. Like Libby and Alex said, um, meeting key people around the route. Um, so you're, you're going to a wildflower area, instead of just telling your judges, why not have someone there that's been involved in it that can talk about the area and what they they did um again you can show um private gardens if you want um if they're visible from a road or a path and again it's really lovely to have the owner of that garden there to talk a little bit and to meet the judges um i know judging time for beautiful scotland is in august and is in the school holidays so we we understand it can be hard to get children involved that might be away on holidays but if you're not able to get anyone there, could they have made a little video for you that you can show to the judges, you know, besides something that they've been involved in? Um, as Alex said, if you're at a project and you're showing them the finished um, result, have photos there to show what it looked like before. Or, and it's absolutely um, acceptable to show work in progress as well, kind of and talk about what your plan is for a particular area you've started working on. Um, again, being realistic with your times is a really useful one. Um, Things will happen on the day, judges will ask questions. So practice your timings and leave a little bit of leeway. And if you do run over by 10 minutes, please don't worry about that. Um, 10 minutes is absolutely fine. Um, and I know, I think North Berwick, you had issues with this last year, is that um, make sure that all your people along your route know that their time might have to be cut short if for whatever reason you're running a little bit late and that they've not to be offended by that. Um, maybe have everyone meet the judges at the end um, as well so they feel really still part of the whole experience. Um, and yeah, practice, 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 always helps. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna pull down the slides now and chance for you to meet some of our volunteer judges and not all of them could be here today and they send our apologies, but we've got a few here today. So I've asked them all to say a little bit about themselves and um, maybe how long they've been volunteering with us and some of them might give a top or a topical tip as well. So I'm just gonna stop sharing. And I will, I'm going to have a look at my screen. Sandy, are you there? I am, I am here. Hello, Julia. Hello, everyone. Oh. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Um, I don't know if you heard, um, I just thought it'd be really nice for each of our volunteer judges to introduce themselves, say a little bit about how long they've been volunteering and anything else you want to say. Um, so yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, well, Maybe you know me, I don't know. I've been judging um, for about 13 years, I think I was told. I thought it was only 10, uh, but it's funny how the years creep up on you a wee bit. 
So um, 13 years judging, um, loving it, been judging every year. Um, I think what I get out of it, um, and I've said this in my blog, um, that it's meeting people for me. Um, it's seeing how each and every community that I go to and we as judges go to uh, really pull together um, and everybody has got this same uh, idea about improving the area that they live in. So to see that uh, knitted with this green thread right throughout the country, it's absolutely fantastic. And it makes Scotland, I think, it certainly helps make Scotland the, the beautiful place it is. Um, but it's not just all about beauty. And one of the speakers there was speaking about growing your community and, and growing uh, as individuals. And I think um, all that kind of community involvement helps you do all that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I get such a lot out of it as a judge. Uh, I always come away buzzing. It takes me about three days to come down after judging. Um, and you don't, you don't forget the people that you, you meet. So for me, um, it's a win-win. You know, I get to steal ideas from other people <laughs> or share them. Um, and I, I get to meet some really, really fantastic people. Um, and it's great because when when you go to certain places and, you know, okay, East Haven, I'll have to mention them, you get a big hug as you see, as you meet them. You know, it's like meeting up with old friends. So uh, I don't get a big hug from Stan when I meet him, though. So maybe one day. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. And do you have a topical tip you want to share? Yeah, I mean, it's been mentioned already, um, but I'm part of a Rotary Club, uh, and we're very um, sort of motivated in the, the town that I'm in. So if you haven't tied in with any of these clubs already, they're probably doing things like litter picking, and they're maybe doing it all by themselves. Um, but, you know, definitely tap into all the sort of local clubs that you possibly can. Um, and people like the Men Shed, if you've got Men Shed, tie in with them. The really, really successful uh, clubs uh, in your town, they'll already be reaching out to other people. So just reach out to them if you haven't already. Great tip. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, okay, who will I pick on now? Joy. You're on mute, Joy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, I'm Joy Gray. Um, I've been judging since 2018, but because of COVID, um, I was so disappointed that um, we had to miss some um, judging. Um, I'm a farmer's daughter from Scottish Borders. I have a degree in agriculture. Um, and I run my own um, garden design business um, called Goose Green Design, based in East Lothian, um, and I set it up in 2004, and it's always been busy, busy. Um, like um, Sandy, judging for Keep Scotland Beautiful, for me, is as much about the people as it is about the plants and the places, uh, and meeting so many different people from so many diverse um, communities um, is just so interesting and it does you get such a buzz out of it um, it's um, it's great to meet people with similar interests and similar values um, and a chance to see places you've never been to in Scotland um, that's a real treat um, and to gather up ideas um, for your own community, um, for my business, um, and for my own garden. Um, so, no, it's great. As Sandy says, it's a win-win. Um, topical tip, enjoy Judging Day. It's, um, it's the culmination of everything you've done, um, and you deserve to enjoy it. So go out there and enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks, Joy. Another great topical tip. Thank you. Uh, Peter. Off. 
Hi, I'm Peter Sanwell. I've only been judging last year as a trainee judge, but I've been involved in um, beautiful Scotland with Dundee City Council, or was it from 2005 to 2019 when I retired. So we, we were heavily involved in, I've always been heavily involved in the sort of competing side and the working with the communities. Um, and I think where I started off when we had chats in the office and things 2005, and I think I'm still there, is, although it is a competition, it was always about how we could show off and how we could improve and bring together the different communities in, in a city like Dundee. And I think we've done that, in, we did that, and people like Sally and others are continuing to do that. And I think the other thing that links well was my sort of other sort of interest with Keep Scotland Beautiful is the Itcher neighbourhoods and how you can actually use the Itcher neighbourhoods in a city to actually link up the amount of work that you're doing. And you know, as well as Rotary Clubs and all these others, if, if you're showing off the works of individual Itcher neighbourhood groups um, across the city or a larger town or a community, you, you can actually bring together a huge amount of work that is being done by different groups, but all working together for the same means. So I, yeah, I enjoy, it's a community stuff and I'm particularly enjoying going out and looking at different communities now. So, so I think that's my interest. My topical tip, it's not a topical tip. It's something, I, everyone talks about perennial plants and sort of almost a demise of bedding. And my interest, particularly in my own garden and doing some work with Bonnie Dundee is how we can actually have color and, and lots of uh, seasonal color but looking at sustainability, looking at biodiversity and pollinators and using a, a different range of annual plants and growing them in, I grow, try and grow them in a slightly different way where you, 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 you're growing much later in the season. You're using, growing them yourselves. So Bonnie Dundee now grow pretty much all their plants themselves. They grow annuals, things like corn marigolds, corn flowers, but not sowing them in bed. But what we're trying to do is sow them much later in small sales. So there's little compost, little watering, and then you've got the little heat, no heat, and you're looking to plant the plants out. So we've been trying that. I'm sure other people are doing similar things, but that's something we've been trying to do over the last couple of years. I think that's it, that's my lot. Yeah, she actually gave two, I think, about working with extra neighbourhood groups and promoting them and linking everything up together and the sustainable planting. So thank you, Peter. They're yeah. two really good Fine. tips. Um, who, Terry. Right, that's it. Got it unmuted. Uh, I'm Terry Stort from Aberdeen. I worked with Aberdeen City Council for 42 years. And then in 2010, retired. So I had a wee bit of spare time. So I decided, oh well, I could become a Keep Scotland Beautiful judge. And I could become a Keep Scotland Beautiful assessor. Uh, both which I thoroughly enjoy and look forward to. Uh, you won't get a better tourist guide of a town, village, or wherever you are than what you will get from the groups. And I've been to places before and never seen parts that have been taken on a judging tour. So, the groups do a fantastic job uh, and it is their day when it's the judging is being done. So never assume that the judges will know it or have seen it before. Tell them everything, even though you say, oh, but everybody knows that. Well, this judge may not know it. And if he doesn't get told it, 
won't be in your marking sheets giving you credit. So always tell the judges everything. And if they've been before, doesn't matter. Tell them it again the next time they visit. As I say, I've never been anywhere that I haven't enjoyed visiting and haven't enjoyed seeing. Uh, all my topical tip would be that remember and show the judges and put stuff in your portfolio that you may not have time to show the judges or forget on judging day. It is your best area that you can review and remember and have time to do, whereas in judging day, you may say, oh, we forgot. Well, if it's in the portfolio, the judge knows it. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. That was another, they're all great tips. Uh, Stan. Should be a little, oh yeah, that's you. Sorry about that. I <laughs> shall try. I have a post-COVID cough and I am sucking sweets and things. So if I suddenly start barking, I will mute again. I have been judging for certainly in excess of 15 years. Um, why judge? Because you're trying to give people recognition and encouragement for what they've been doing. Uh, this is particularly important just now because all groups are under pressure, and this comes from the all local authorities are now so pushed for financially, they're not able to give the support they used to. And in East Lothian, we've still got we've still got a plant nursery, which is fairly unusual nowadays, and the groups do get quite a lot of support. That is not accidental. That is because there are now so many groups in East Lothian doing community horticulture that has registered with elected councillors that this actually promotes well-being for relatively small amounts of money. And the provost certainly likes to come along with his chain on when various people have won things. So I know you're all under pressure. I would encourage you to engage with local elected representatives and basically make the case that for a relatively small expenditure, you can create an awful lot of goodwill. Um, other tips going out and looking at what other people are doing and inviting them to come along and see what you're doing. I've always taken the view that if I'm going judging anything, whether it's a flower show or a town, people should be able to come along and judge the sort of thing that I and my colleagues have been doing. I think the next group who are coming to New Slothian will be this Friday. And another thing, if you happen to be at a loose end in Glasgow this Saturday, I'm showing plants in a church hall in Bear's Den and you can come along and have a critical look at my stuff. It's called Bal Jaffrey Church Hall. And if you can't make that, and if you're in the Aberdeen area, two weeks from Saturday, um, Duthie Park and the David Welsh Gardens, which are always worth a visit, we've got another show up there. So come along and have a critical look at my stuff. Thanks, Dan. Uh, he does mean that. So if you can get along, go, go along. And I'm, I'm sure they're pretty impressive, the plants. Uh, okay, I think we've got two more. So Sarah, you're you're not muted, so you can go ahead. Well, hello, I'm Sarah Turnell, and I'm um, a fairly new judge. Um, having done my um, what, judging for the first time last year, I've been a member of Dunbar in Bloom for many years, and we achieved our gold medal in 2019. And we've now got our ongoing issues of um, recruiting volunteers to help out. Um, but Dunbar is actually um, very lucky in that it's got many groups going, doing lots of little things around the town. So it is um, still performing really well. Um, it just needs all sort of coordinating together, but we're going to get there, I'm sure. I also um, do It's Your Neighbourhood Assessing, and I love that, um, in that you get taken 
to some amazing places. I mean, I went to a cemetery last year, um, <laughs> which was great fun um, in the pouring rain. Um, but you just um, feel um, so special in that you're being shown um, things that um, inspire you and, um, you know, make things, well, so that you see different things in the world, if you like, and that are going on around you. Um, I think from my, my point of view, with having lots of different hats on, um, it's the, it is the enjoyment of doing it. It's the, it's the achievement and it's the, um, you know, the meet, as, as everyone seems to say, it's the meeting people who have similar, um, you know, goals and um, yeah, it, it just, it, it just makes you feel very happy being outside and, 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 and seeing lots of lovely things. So um, hopefully we can do it all again this summer. That would be great, won't it? <laughs> now, just my top tip, I just wanted to show people what my dining room looks like at the moment. So I'm just going to turn my camera and see if you can see it. Lots of seedlings. Yes, we're being taken over. <laughs> so um, that's what happens in our house at this time of year. We get taken over by masses of stuff. <laughs> This is for uh, Bellhaven Community Hospital, which is an its neighbourhood group, and also Dunbar and Bloom, and also our own huge garden. So it all goes along in the Turnhill household. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing the photos of the mite growing in the garden. Oh, yeah, 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 it won't be long. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I think last of our judges, um, who we've already heard from, but from her with her East Haven hat on, we've got Wendy. Um, hello. Um, well, as I said in my presentation, East Haven's now participated for 10 years and I became a beautiful Scotland, it's your neighbourhood assessor in 2017, I think. So that was um, a really um, great experience. I have really enjoyed meeting other people and always find, um, like the other um, judges and assessors have said, that it's a great privilege to be shown around people's communities and to find out more about the work that they're doing and um, I think um, in terms of top tips I would probably say that um, I think what's really important is just to relax and enjoy it because in East Haven we've tried I don't think we've ever been competitive at all with any other communities we, we don't really talk about it as being a competition for us it's very much an event it's very much been part of a much bigger family of people across Scotland who are trying to make a big difference in their communities and what is really important is those three pillars it is about community participation it's about taking that pride in place and um, working with as many people as possible. And all of that, it's just such a positive thing to be doing. And um, judging day, we, we've made friends with so many of the judges as well now. And um, that has been a really great and positive experience. So yeah, the, the main thing is, is just to really enjoy it and to get as much out of the experience as you can for your own communities. So that's me. Thank you, Wendy. Um, very aware that I've not given any time for any questions yet. So as well as any questions, I have still got some slides on this year and dates and things, um, but I wondered if uh, groups would like to introduce themselves and say whether, well, how long they've been taking part or if this is a new, a new first year of them taking part, if you're in non-judged or judged, if you're thinking about registering. Um, and for those that have taken part for a while, maybe you want to share what they get out of it. Um, so I will, ah, oh, Kevin from Polmont, one of our new groups you have unmuted. Would you right. like Hang on, wait then now, right. okay, right. Oh, you're right. on mute, oh, you're off. I'm on mute, right, me. Hello, right, I'm, we'll try to bring this up a bit more. Oh, you've gone. Oh no, he's dropped off, hasn't he? 
He must have pressed the leave button. Okay, well, Kevin rejoins. Um, oh no, here he comes. <laughs> Kevin, we can see you and we can hear you. Right, I'm back now. Right, that's it. Uh, yes, uh, we just kind of started, obviously, last year. Uh, we've had a lot of council cuts, should we say, massive council cuts, and a lot of the beds that we used to have in the village looked really tired, overgrown, and it wasn't the original plan was to start with that, but we started with something else and it's kind of grown into that. So we've got a good big group together now and we're doing quite a lot of projects within the village. We've got most of the beds into a kind of reasonable state. And now we're starting on planters, barrels, hanging baskets. And we're trying to see basically a lot of the, we found a lot of suppliers have been really, really good. A lot of people have been really, helpful and donating stuff it's been really good that way brilliant that's great and you're, you're looking forward to being having our judges visit hopefully i'm looking forward to it it's a bit daunting because we don't know what to expect and i'm going to ask you about the portfolio thing because i'm not really sure i missed the first 10 15 minutes of the meeting because i was coming home from work uh, but i'll i'll catch up with you and you can help me a wee bit more with that Definitely. Well, I'm um, sending out some documents after this, either later today or tomorrow, that will give you the guidance for the portfolio, kind of a suggested structure. Um, and like I say, if you want one of the judges to come out for some mentor support, that's an offer to all groups, no matter non-judged or judged. Um, mm -hmm. I can put you up with someone who can come up and they can walk around and give you ideas of maybe how you'd like to, to make your tour and also give you advice on the portfolio. So, yeah, that's a really good resource. That we can I mean, it's... It's very much a, a work in progress because we've had to take on so much. But I think we'll keep on going. And I think it, it's, it, it actually puts a smile on my face when I see people like tooting the horn. Or, or just, it's nice. It's just it's, it's a nice feeling to see that you're doing something back into what is a really nice community. Yeah, well, it's, it's great. I'm really glad you found us. And yeah, really glad that we can give you recognition for what you're doing. Right, that's great, um, thanks. So you're a big network, so yeah, get in touch with other groups and as Stan said, visit or yeah, get people to come visit you. Right. Cool. They'll learn from each other. So right. nice Brilliant. Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Um, anyone else? Oh, Libby, I mean, Alex, sorry. <laughs> Hi, sorry, a couple of things. Yeah, okay, a couple of things um, I should have said earlier. One, we work out, we work our itinerary out for the time and we have timings on and where we'll speak to people where we'll be at a certain time and I think you need to do that you know and so the three hours or whatever length of time we've got and we'll allow for a bit of as you say things falling behind so don't fill it to the three hours because it probably will run over to three and a quarter or something and you want to get it done in the time and then on the actual day I'm about 10 minutes ahead of Libby and the judges just checking everyone's in place. So it's a good thing to have a front runner, I think. Um, and we check all the street and we get everything tidied up, sort of seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning. On judging day, we're out at seven um, with the other groups picking up cigarette ends and all of that, because it, it does all just count. I know when I started four years ago in the group and the first summer I went out to help, I thought, do we really need to pick up cigarette ends and, the, and all the stuff like that? Yes, you do if you want to. Um, get the best of marks and make the town look its best for the judges. But certainly well, having something going ahead, making sure people are ready for it is, I think, a really important thing. It's probably something all the groups do, but it's just something I think is really useful. Oh, really, yeah, really good tip. And I'll say it's just it's nice for the community to see you doing things like that, the litter picking, picking up cigarette ends, because hopefully then it will bring more pride from the wider community to stop dropping so it's a good exercise for that as well I think not just for doing it for the judges coming um thank you um anyone from Bonnie Dundee want to share how long you've been taking part why you take part any top tips oh come in Trudy's here I think she can yeah Trudy and Sally are there as too. well I mean Bonnie Dundee as Peter said it started way back 2005 and we started like Kevin just very very small 
we had about five planters and we're now up to over 50. But it just keeps growing. I mean, um, we do enjoy what we're doing very much. So as a city centre group, we're finding the changing climate quite challenging in that, especially last year, with the, the summer heat and the buildings surrounding it, getting making the area even warmer. It's lack of water. And in a city centre, you can't have water barrels because somebody else will come around and turn the tap on just for the fun of it. So we're basically by, by our planting, we're having to try and negotiate around these problems. But being part of this community is great because we've always got somebody to email help. So being part of this beautiful Scotland community is really good. One thing I will say, I mean, it's lovely seeing pictures of groups, volunteers, and you've got about 20 odd there. We really struggle with volunteers, whether it's because we're a city centre, whether people don't feel community orientated in a big city, I don't know. This year we, we've been given 200 um, posters. They were printed by one of our members' daughters and it was all for free. So we're putting these around just very simple posters with a simple logo, asking people basically for help. So watch this space. Yeah, let us know how that goes. Um, <laughs> yes, fingers <laughs> crossed. Yeah, I do know what, what Bonnie Dundee is really good at is that you work with others. And so, you know, you live yes. with the university, well, yeah. Trudy, a bit that if you want and the business community and all the extra neighborhood groups across the city so you all kind of do your own thing but link together for the we are community. we are very very well linked but you know sometimes when it comes to planting bulbs and things like that you really yes oh, we shout help sure. quite a lot <laughs> shout help quite a lot <laughs> yeah Trudy, do you want to say anything? Yeah, I was just going to comment, and it's to do with working with groups. And I was in contact, here's a good example. Last week, it was, I can't, the Trades Congress conference in Dundee or something. Well, anyway, at public sector workers there, Department of Social Security across from the train station. I got talking to some of them. Uh, they have one community day a year and I went, oh great, I'm going to speak to the group to see if you could maybe water some of the planters near you. Catherine, are you listening? I'm listening. <laughs> so <laughs> I suggested possibly outside the Malmaison, even the railway station, I said if you could water and weed, that'd be a big help. And if you're really keen, you can help us plant as well. But even somebody just watering these planters once a week is such a big help in the summertime. So Little things like this, go out, contact big companies. They've got one day a year of community volunteering. And nine times out of 10, we end up getting on litter picking. But I'm going to try and get people to adopt tubs, even if it's just to water them. You know, like we'll still provide plants. They can plant if they want. We'll, we'll provide you with plants and tools. But the biggest help, if we could have somebody every week checking a lot of our tubs with weeding and watering. So that's that's my tip. If you can find somebody to do weeding and watering and it cuts down on your hours. Because we've tried giving out free watering cans to local businesses and everything. So now I'm going down the bigger route. Let's go for big public bodies where they've staff are actively looking for one day's community work, if that makes sense. So yeah. go out and approach the big bodies, approach the big supermarkets. They all allow their staff one full day a year to do community benefits. So that, that's my tip. Go approach big employers. Good idea. Yeah, we get one day of volunteering a year and I always forget about it. So anyone near <laughs> Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> get in there, Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Trudy. Um, I don't know uh, who else we've got. If Linda or Eleanor want to say anything or introduce themselves. Hi there. Um, Hi, can you Linda. hear me okay? Yep, we can. Yeah. Um, so I am part of Evergreen Eldersley um, and our group started a good few years ago now, I think. We did It's Your Neighbourhood for three years, um, but that was with the Eldersley Community Council. And then because it 
kind of started to grow arms and legs, we thought it would be a good idea to get our own like gardening group. Um, and we ran a competition with the local school to come up with the name for the group. And um, one of the kids designed an emblem for us. Um, so we have kind of grown over the years. Um, I, I just want to reiterate what's been said just there. We really, really struggle to get volunteers to help us. Um, I did a litter pick last month and I was the only person there. Not one single person turned up. Um, and it's really, really disheartening. Um, and it's trying to think of ways to try and get different community groups involved and um, different ways of trying to get the word out there. But I, I thought the leaflets was a really good idea um, because that's not something that we've done before. Um, we are quite active on our social media, so we do use that quite a lot, but obviously not everyone's on social media. Um, so I think I'll maybe bring that up at the next community council meeting um, and see if they all um, could pay to get leaflets done for us and we could do a leaflet drop in the village. Um, so yeah, I, I think we did take part in Beautiful Scotland last year as a non-judge category. Um, and I've, I've not done an application yet because I really don't know whether to do that again or just to go back to it's your neighbourhood. So I kind of been really struggling, you know, what to do next. Uh, one uh, first year, first bit, the leaflet thing. So some groups, they'll just say, can you volunteer an hour a year? Because I think a lot of people think, oh, I've got to sign up to something regular. I can't do that. But an hour a year that, oh, I can do that. So uh -huh. whether that, I don't know if that's what Trudy was going to say, because Trudy, you've got your hand up. No, are you going to say something else? No, what I was going to say was, it's slightly different in my, in my daytime job, I work on the university campus. So I now have set up in certain groups, so Life Sciences, last Friday of every month in their lunch break, they're doing litter picks now. Um, and then they work, in return, they get a free cup of soup in a row, because I contact our internal caterers, it's something like two pounds they charge me for every three cups of soup in a row. So I just send to them, tell them to bill me at the end. So we're talking maybe 10, 20 pounds at the end. Half the time the caterers don't feel guilty charging me and don't, <laughs> if you see what I mean. So, and as a reward, you're going to love this, right? These staff, I had printed for them high vis vests that have University of Dundee volunteer written on them. I've given them their own litter picking poles. Normally I just provide them for all the litter picks in the city, well, across campus as well, but I've given them and I've said, if you promise to do it every week, every month during the term, you can keep the pole and the gloves. And they think that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely think it's great. So that's a guarantee. There's one taking place on Friday and they've just written to me today saying, is it okay? We've got eight definitely coming on Friday and we've only booked soup for seven. And I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> so there's just little incentives. It can just even be that you'll buy them a coffee at the end or, okay. as I say, go into a student union and buy a cup of soup at two pounds. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the little things. And I think they also like to know in advance. So I've tried to set it up as the last Friday of the month so other people can join them. Although it's a closed loop, anyone can join, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So as I say, go out to your big employers, go to colleges, go to universities, go to Tesco's, go to Keep Scotland Beautiful, go to all your public bodies, because lots of people actively want to help, but they don't know how. Mm -hmm. And as Juliet's comment about one hour a year, brilliant, because that's the thing, oh, we can't help every week. I've only got the third Friday in the months that begin with R. You know, it's that sort of thing. So, yeah, if they can only do an hour, then great. Or if you can give them a watering can and they'll water for you once a week, great. It's because nobody can, nobody will commit to regular things every week now. I don't think that's my, that's what I think anyway. Wow. People don't want to commit to anything too much. So mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah. my wee Thanks, preference really. first. Linda, after hearing everything today, you don't think you might like to try the judged category? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> with mentor support we could link you up um i'll speak to the rest of the, the the community council members and see what they think um i don't know if we get enough community participation i don't know if we would fall down um on that 
because we do really struggle. Um, and I've said, I think it was last year, I did go around all the, the lo local groups and they said, yeah, we'll help, we'll do this, we'll do that. And they just they just didn't at all. Oh, sure. um, and it's, it's it's just quite hard, you know, it's quite disheartening. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so rewarding being out there, you know. I, I, I love doing it. You know, you're out in the fresh air. It's good for your mental health. You, you know, because my mum will say to me, you've been away for ages. What, what's, what's taking you so long? It's because everyone stops to chat to you. So you spend all day chatting to people. Um, so, yeah, I'll have a thought. It's at the end of this month we have to get the application in. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, by Sunday. Okay. But, yeah, if you want to give me okay. a call to chat or, yeah, we can talk through it. Okay. Okay, I'll do that then. Okay. Thanks, Linda. Thank you um, very much. Oh, Kevin, you've got your hand up. Right. What I was going to ask, did, how did the, the groups actually manage to do stuff on their own? Like, I mean, have they got working space, a lot of the groups? Are they kind of doing it in back gardens or...? How's it do you done? Mean, uh, do you mean growing, like growing things for the well, planters and things? No, not necessarily the growing thing, but like so doing work, building planters, building, doing all that kind of stuff, separate things, hanging baskets and that. Do they do it for their own gardens or do they do it from like a, a separate workspace? Eleanor, do you want to come in on that? Because I know you've got, do you want to say <coughs> Oh, can't hear you. Well, that's a bit odd. You're not muted, but there's no sound coming. Hmm. Oh, do, you want, do you want to try saying something? I'll tell you if we can hear you. Hmm. Right, because what I was going to say is I can show you, right, I'll take my, my Wi-Fi should be good enough, so I'll show you what I mean as we are at the moment. Right, and I'll take you out the back. I should be good, should be good enough to sing like here. And I don't know if you can actually see, but this is my kind of working space. In your garden. In my garden, I've got soil, I've got planters. I've got rid of some of my chimney pots, but I've got five planters here. And then I go around the side, and I've got barrels <laughs> and it's it's trying to get a, a separate working space so we can kind of maybe work. Yeah, yeah. Does oh, any what you mean? Yeah, does any groups or any judges want to share anything they've come across that are other groups that have had the same experiences and then managed to find a bit of land? Mm -hmm. Oh, Trudy's saying Dundee they get a shared use of a polytunnel for growing on plugs and seeds. So uh yeah, many are growing in their own homes. I think quite a lot of groups do, do that. Mm -hmm. TV um, used to, Falkirk, Falkirk always done, used to have like, it was always in Britain and Bloom. Falkirk had a old, big stand in that at one time. And they used to have a big area, which was uh, in Bones, and then big, massive greenhouses and that. And then what happened was council cuts, shut it. Uh, and it's now used for growing vegetables for food banks. Oh, wow. Uh, but for some of it, uh, but uh, I know that there's other groups that kind of they, they just kind of kind of do their own thing in bonus because I think it's like it's, it's no shared it's not like a oh, shared so area. There's no space in there that you could you could have. No, uh, well we're we're about six or seven miles away from there because of the way it, it's out in the coast a wee bit, so it would probably be a bit harder. But I was actually going to speak to one of the council employees to see if we could maybe get like a like an old bothy or something, so we could use it as a base. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sally, you've got your hand up. I don't know if you want to share something. Well, that was just sort of what I was going to suggest, is uh, we try the try your local authority to see if they know of any unused spaces that you could use, because there could be a, a courtyard tucked around the back of a library somewhere or or something uh -huh. that you could use, or um, whether the you could whether there's any school gardens you could tie in with or or any organizations um just say in an industrial area that just as an area of of ground they're not using or and maybe a storage area that you could keep tools in um, uh -huh. it's maybe worth looking into 
we were actually see that at the moment they're, they're actually shutting a lot of buildings in po well, in our village and other villages like the community centres and that where we were kind of working out of as like for meetings and that so that's thing but we're also looking at possibly looking at maybe like there's one of the cemeteries has got like a kind of bothy place so we're looking to see where we could get that from them but i don't know if they'll give us it for free sometimes i might just want something nominal because then someone's kind of keeping an eye and looking after their area and um, so mm -hmm. they might not want that much i'll give it a shot yeah they can <laughs> the worst they'll say is no <laughs> exactly in a lot of cases, the That's council find it more costly to send out the bill than what they're getting back from the bill. So they'll give it to you for nothing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thanks, Terry. Um, can you hear me now, Juliet? Oh, yes. Yeah. Hi, Eleanor. Oh, <laughs> we good. Can. Um, well, Inspiring in Ellen's been going since 2018, and we have a fantastic community that um, just seems to give us and give us and give us. Um, I don't really have any reason why that should be, but we are very fortunate. We have been given a wonderful conservatory the last two years for growing plants. We have a yard area which was given to us where we have two sheds and all our composting bins, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I think our secret is we have work parties every Sunday morning and after the work party is finished, we feed people. We have a soup and sandwich lunch at the end of our work party, which means that we socialise after having done a few hours work. And that seems to work really, really well and encourage people to come along. But we also have loads of people who do things in their own free time. Um, not at the work party, but at any time they've got during the week, like repairing benches or um, making planters for us and all sorts of different things. So we really, we sort of landed in 2018. We took part after meeting Wendy from East, ha East Haven. I uh, don't know if it meant Wendy remembers we came through with the Blair Moore contingent. And I came back thinking, oh my gosh, I'll never do that. Um, but it was really inspirational. And we have gone from strength to strength as a result of that meeting, you know. We definitely have. Yeah, I'd say that if you want, anyone wants to learn anything about community spirit, <laughs> go and visit in Ellen or, or speak to Eleanor. Um, I know when I came over to present your award from last year, just, it's just, yeah, the spirit is fantastic. And the conservatory you mentioned, it's, people that it's their holiday home, isn't it? So although they're given a space they don't use, they're part of the community because they, they come and join you when they are there. Is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's a great way for them to feel part of the community, even though they're not there all the time. So oh, little it's things tremendous. like that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Eleanor. Um, okay. I'll just, I, I'll pull up the final slides. It's basically about the year ahead. And then if there's any more questions after that, um, I'll pull the slides down. So just. Um, let me get on with that. Okay, so done. Ooh, hopefully this will work. Okay. But just to kind of reiterate, and again, I'll be sending out a document that has all this on it, but just to reiterate what the support and resources are out there that, that are available to you for no cost. So there's obviously the network of all of Beautiful Scotland and our It's Your Neighbourhood groups. Um, I was happy to kind of link, share. Um, so. We have an online map and we also have a page for each group. So go and explore and find out if there's groups in your area um, or there's particular things you you are thinking of doing or would like help with, just get in touch with me and I can hopefully put you in touch with a group that's doing similar. Um, again, there's the free, free mentor support. So if you would like one of our volunteers to come out or speak to you over the phone, if there's something you're, you're having issues with, um, do let me know. Um, obviously, as Wendy said, the mark sheet and the criteria just gives you a really good structure and gives you kind of ideas of the things to work towards. Um, then there's a regular newsletter, one just went out this week that, again, I'm always looking for stories, but it's, it's a great um, newsletter to read and to get inspired yourself. And there's always links to funding. I hear about other kind of activities or campaigns coming up and the online question and answer sessions we started in the first year of the lockdown and 
they aren't so regular anymore but if there's anything you'd like to hear about or you'd like to share then let me know and we can organize an online q a session there's the web pages um, that's the link there again there's quite a lot of useful information in there and like i said there's a page for each group so you can go on and have a, if they've taken part last year there'll be a portfolio and you can have a look at their portfolio um, just to get some more ideas. We have our award ceremony and seminar. Um, the award ceremony will be in person in September, but date and venue TBC. So that'll be a great opportunity to all get together, our, our first time in person all together since 2019. Um, and then our seminar for all our beautiful Scotland and Itra neighbourhood groups will be on the 8th of November and on, online. Again, that's a really good opportunity to come hear from other groups, um, just get in inspiration and then we'll have sort of celebration as well and then the so your judges if you're in the judge category they'll come and visit and then they write up a, a report that highlights what you're doing really well under horticulture environment and community and they also give you some recommendations and suggestions if there's areas of work they think could, well things that they think would help you um and the surgery it just is a chance to chat to your judges chat through the mark sheet um and again, to get some good guidance and advice. Uh, Beautiful Scotland and Itra Neighbourhood are part of the Royal Horticultural Society's UK-wide Britain and Bloom campaign. So through that, you get access to their online community resources, um, discounted insurance, and they also have a free plant advisory service. So again, this will all be detailed in the document. Um, and again, please do use that because it's there for you free of charge. The dates for this year, so up to the end of June for the judge category and um, the mentor support um, all year round kind of for everyone else. Um, the end of May you should have heard from your judges about when sort of uh, potential dates so if there's any dates you know from the 31st of July to the 13th of August which is the judging fortnight. If there's any dates you know you can't do because there's a big event happening in your community let me know as soon as you can because I'll then pass it on to your judges. Um, the portfolio and discretionary awards which we'll come on to the deadline for those is the 3rd of July. And I just say, please do try and get in by that deadline, especially the portfolio, because it enables your judges to have time to read it, to really kind of understand what your community's been getting up to through the year before they come and visit. Um, the photo deadline, so this is photos that we use and the award ceremony um, in sort of on social media. Um, yeah, we use it for a variety of things and in the newsletter. So again, sort of deadline 21st of July for that. Um, as I've said, the judging fortnight, 31st of July to 13th of August. September will be our celebration event and surgeries and the 8th of November, the seminar. Um, so what we're, what the groups in the judge category get awarded. So we have a medal certificate. So for every group, and that's from bronze to gold. And your report sheet for each pillar. So horticulture will give you, you'll see if you've got a bronze up to gold in that. And the same for environment, the same for community, and then an overall medal level. We used to give out marks, but we don't do that anymore. So we're consistent with the, the UK finals, but um, the judges will give you sort of feedback in, in the written part of the report sheet, which will kind of show you which areas you're strong in, which ones you might uh, need to do a bit of work in or give you suggestions of what you could do. There's a 13 category award. So that's wee village, small town, large town, city, and uh, the overall Rose Bowl. So that's the top overall scoring entrant, which last year was a uh, joint between East Haven, so we have Wendy here today, and Aberdeen. And um, and then we have the 14 discretionary awards. So these are awards that the groups in the judge categories can put submissions in for, and I'll just be touching on them in a minute. We also have a number of discretionary awards for all our extra neighbourhood groups and beautiful Scotland groups, whether you're in judged or non-judged, and they're linked to the seminar in November. So again, information will come out about those ones as well. So the discretionary awards for the either the judged or the non-judged, um, they're all about showcasing your achievements and the things you're particularly proud of. So the, the ones I'm going to cover now are for the, the groups in the judge categories. You could submit for up to two. Um, and with your written submission, also, it's really important that you provide some photos up to seven, which kind of shows the judges and the panel that will then be put forward to kind of who won't have visited. Um, it gives more evidence of what you're trying to tell them in your submission. It's like I say, focus on your strengths when you're deciding which two, one or two you want to put in for. Deadline again, 3rd of July. Um, and really 
good if you highlight um, in your presentation to your judges and in your tour, um, you mention again about the discretionary words you've put in for and if it's a particular project, um, show that to the judges. So again, it's in their minds. The judges can also put forward their own submissions. So things that they see when they're out on the tours um, so they can uh, nominate your group for something as well. And then those nominations get put forward to a panel who meets in August. Um, mm -hmm. All of the medals and awards will be found out at the award ceremony. So these are the ones for the judge categories this year. So you can see there's a number that um, both community and local authority entries can put nominations in for. There's a few that are just for community entries and a couple that are just purely for local authorities. Um, there's a new one this year for our optional theme on health and wellbeing award. And then there's the two at the bottom, which um, the new entrant trophy is purely done on the top scoring new entrant. Um, and the Keep Scotland Beautiful Award is chosen by us as a charity. Um, so yeah, I'll, again, there'll be information about this sent out so you can have a look at the criterion and decide whether one of those fits your community. Um, like I mentioned, we have, we've had an optional theme for groups since 2016, and they're a great way for groups to focus celebration events or activities around. It is an optional thing, so you don't have to get involved with it, but um, this year's one theme is health and wellbeing. And again, a few groups have touched on this already. Like the social side of Bloom activities is just, it's such a, can't even think of the word, it's just such an important thing that getting everyone together for a cup of tea or people who can't really get involved in gardening. Um, can you get them together and have them planting out little seedlings or in the care homes? Anything really growing veg, getting kids involved. Health and wellbeing carry cover, uh, covers such a massive, a massive array of activities. And yeah, we can't wait to uh, see what you come up with. And if you are doing something under the theme, make sure you do tell your judges about it in your portfolio on the tour. Um, there's obviously the discretionary award for the judge categories, but the seminar, we have a public vote for um, health and wellbeing activities. So I'll send you information out about that, but that's for any groups. Um, and it's literally submitting an A4 side um, detailing what your project or what you've been doing. And then we send out to everyone to vote on it and we'll announce the winner at the seminar. So, yeah. And if you've got any ideas you think might inspire others as well, please do send them to me and I can pop them in the newsletter. Um, and that is brings me to the end of our beautiful Scotland Spring Seminar for 2023, but we've still got a bit of time if anyone's got any questions or queries or wants to share anything. Because um, I'm aware I kind of went through, we went through the, the three showcase portfolio presentation and tour without really stopping for questions. So if anyone has anything they want to ask. Or any of the judges feel I've missed anything? Or Katie, if you feel I've missed anything. Juliet, I would just yes. like to say to the group, the judges are maybe not too concerned about time, but if they've got volunteers who they've arranged to meet at to meet the judges at a certain time. They may have other commitments later on than that time. That it is important that they try and keep to their time schedules five, ten minutes back or forward. Most folk don't worry. But if somebody said, oh, yeah, we'll see you there at 10 o'clock, we don't arrive till 20 to 11, it can be disheartening for that people that said they'll meet the judges at that location. Thank you, Terry. And I'll add to that as well. Uh, don't be scared to tell your judges to move on. If they're asking lots of questions and you're timing, you, you, you need to move on to meet someone else. You can say, oh, sorry, could, we need to move on now. Yeah, don't be afraid to move your judges on either. Um, oh, yeah, and if you, so giving tea, coffee, cakes, lunch um, to your judges is completely optional. But if, if you would like to do it, and I know a lot, a lot of groups do like doing it, having relaxing at the end, just when you get your contact from your judges, just check with them, timings. Um, another really important one is when they arrive, they might have traveled from quite far away. Um, we're all human, we all need a comfort break. So make sure there's either where you're doing a presentation, there's toilets or you're near somewhere that they can have a quick comfort break before you start. That's another really important tip as well. Um, 
sure there's other things I've forgotten. Um, oh, Sally, you got your hand up. I was just going to say to sort of for the groups that are maybe newer to it or a bit a bit wary that don't uh, basically don't undersell yourself because you probably find you're already doing more than you think you are if you were to write do a mock portfolio and get all your photos out and not a list of all the things you're doing and all the people involved then you you might find that it's it's more than you think <laughs> yeah it all, it all, um like even even just uh certainly in dundee every one of the the community groups we meet you could easily spend the full tour just speaking to them never mind um the, an entire village or town or city yeah great thanks sally um, I know some groups as well, they like to have display boards up just to evidence more kind of, so it might be a community rep at a display board just showing what they do, what their project is, and that's totally fine to do as well um, at the end, beginning. Um, just another opportunity for your judges to meet other people and see the breadth of work going on across your community. Wendy, you're unmuted. Did you want to add anything? Well, I, I was just going to um, add on to what Sally was saying, really, that um, if, and I'm speaking here as um, a participant rather than a judge, but if anybody has any questions as things progress and they feel even that they're daft questions or they just want to talk things through or chat, you know, I'd be really happy to do that on the phone as well. And I'm sure people like Sally and people in other groups would as well, you know, if we have um, participated for a number of years. Um, we can share our experiences and you know just help to clarify a few things as time goes on because <clears> it can feel a little bit daunting but it doesn't have to be at all. Um, yeah because I remember Wendy quite a few years ago you you said when I was thinking about not taking part anymore and I managed to cajole you. <laughs> to <Yeah. keep> you. <laughs> That's right so yes do feel free to um, just contact other groups or just ask other people for just lots of you know, any advice or tips or whatever. Thank you. I think unless there's anything else, that's a really good a nice one to finish on. Um so yeah, registration ends Sunday. Um so hopefully I can get the allocations out to my to the judges um soonish after that. I am going on holiday from a week on Friday for a week, so it might be a little delay, but the idea is that they should, for those in the judge category, they should be in touch, your allocated judges should be in touch with you um, by the end of May, beginning of June, to kind of um, get a date sort of confirmed with you. That'll work. So, but in the meantime, just don't, don't be scared to get in touch if you've got any questions. And lovely to see you all. And thank you to all our volunteer judges for your time today as well. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 And thanks, Wendy and Libby and Alex as well for your presentations.